to Jack Miller. We're going to hear from a very, very happy and very content Aussie. Are you there, guys? Yes, yes I'm right to you. Really disappointing, but there wasn't enough signal at the back to do it. Jack was happy to talk, but he jumped in a car. He said he couldn't wait around to come out in front of the garage. He's going out on track to watch. Um, they had a technical issue with the bike, which had been plaguing them from the very start. It's why he was late getting out on it in the first place. And um, they've packed up for the day only because of that. Um, he was, like you said, Matt, uh, glowing, uh, you know, report about the bike. He said the difference between the, you know, from his 17 to 19 now uh, GP machine is, he said, like you said, better in every way. Um, one of the journalists just asked what would be the biggest uh, improvement? What did you like about it the most? And he said he did mention... He'd mentioned turning like you said earlier, but he said, I probably love the gearbox the most because it puts the power so smoothly through to the rear tire where uh, the conventional box, you know, like uh, it doesn't, you know. And he said also the power delivery is so linear. Those two things, guys, make a big difference to the rear tire grip, you know, not, you know, putting it down so smoothly, but having no gap in the power. Uh, delivered to it must be a beautiful box for him to say that's the best thing but uh yeah like you said he said everything on the bike is a step better it's nothing like his old bike he couldn't believe it was uh the, the, this you know out of the same uh, factory thanks for that simon yeah jack miller needed that he wanted something a bit smoother on uh, power delivery unfortunately for ducati though it's not a particularly pretty sight for their test rider either michaeli piro's just crashed down at turn six the bike was smoking a bit in the meantime vinales is quickest now with a 31.4 yeah well that's the first crash test of the gp19 certainly the first one we've seen in public so jack miller incredibly happy but he can't wait to get back out on track again tomorrow to put more miles on that gp19 it does sound like there, there is a difference Simon, are you, are you coming back in i oh, know you said it he will be back out tomorrow morning he's rubbing his hands together yeah, it does sound like Alvaro Bautista was mentioning, I think, to some Spanish journalists, what, what he noticed, the big difference between the GP17 he was racing this year and the GP18 factory bike was there's a difference in the single shift gearbox that the current, the latest spec the Cathy's run, because his mind was just blown when he got on that bike in Australia. He said, like Simon just mentioned what Jack Miller was saying, the single shift gearbox on the latest spec factory bike is just like a dream, absolutely awesome. So we're... Uh, Jack Miller pumped and already raring to go for 2019 by the sound of it. Good news and hopefully he'll be back out again tomorrow. This is Fabio Quattararo of course, one of four rookies that makes the move up into the Premier Class if you're joining us for the first time. Everyone is out there, we have some test riders out there as well, all four rookies have been out on circuit. The fastest of them so far is number 36, Joan Mir, although he is the only rookie that will be lining up on the grid next year on factory machinery. We have Matt Dunn coming into the commentary box with us in just over 20 minutes to ask some Tech Talk questions. Hashtag Tech Talk on Twitter if you want to get involved. If you have any questions for me or Matt uh, or for Simon, uh, send them through to us here in the commentary box at Steve Day or at Bertie Moto GP, and we will do our very best. Uh, to answer any questions that come in. Here's Fabio Quattararo then, the Frenchman joining up with this new Petronas Yamaha SRT team, led by team director Johan Stigerfeld, a former 250cc racer himself. Back in the day, Wilco Zielenberg, a former 250cc Grand Prix winner, the Dutchman moving over from Yamaha's factory team as a rider performance analyst, now team manager of this new project. We had one question coming in from uh, Arjun Modart, who says, is one of the f uh, Petronas Yamahas out there, are any of the riders going to be riding a factory bike like Zarco did this year? No, that's, that's not going to happen. They, they, they let Zarco have a little play, didn't they, with some of their other stuff. They basically turned him into a test rider at one point before we got going for this season. But that was more on the basis they were lost. And so they needed as many hands on deck as possible. That is not happening. The only factory rider that will be is Morbidelli at the start of the season. Although he will be testing today and tomorrow just the 2018 Yamaha. As we see replays here of Michele Pirro. It looks like he was a little bit shaken up by that one, doesn't it, Pirro? Career best ever in MotoGP. In the deluge here on Sunday, fourth place. 
Heard from him talking to Simon Cray for early on today, a little bit frustrating actually. It was a career best in the Premier Class, but only a second away from Paul Espargo in third place. Now, this man now leads the way. Maverick Vinales, 131.416. Really impressive lap, that coming in from the Spanish rider. He's three tenths of a second quicker than Marc Marquez. So, the he's reset button press, and he's done a really good job of it so far. He's upset with himself there into turn four, though. <laughs> Yeah, new page, new beginning for Maverick Vinales. Be interested to know if, if this is work being done, Steve, on this brand new upgraded spec engine. We heard Maya Marigali before the lunch break say that there are two different spec engines here for Rossi and Vinales to work their way through. Yeah, Simon, I don't know if you'd be able to find that out from Yamaha or not, whether or not Vinales and Rossi are now exclusively working with that newer 19 engine but they're certainly going well on it at this moment in time. Maverick Vinyal is then fastest. Number 12 he will be for next year. He decided that he wanted to make a change. Apparently he wanted to make the change sooner, but he couldn't use the number 12 because Tom Lutie was running it. It's a, a number that he started with before he came on to the world scene. And if you like all these sorts of things, at the start of next year, it will be 12 years since he won his first ever road racing championship at the age of 12. I think that's just more coincidence than anything else. Good luck coming in here then from Alicia Spargo. Since Philip Island has been running this experimental lab Aprilia RSGP, a combination, a hybrid if you like, of 2017 parts and 2019 parts as well. They've put what they hope is the best blend, the best combination of those parts here for this prototype 2019 RSGP. Rear grip is what Alicia Spargo has been crying out for all season. We mentioned earlier on how he was always able to race the soft tyre, even in hot places like Mazzano, Mugello, Barcelona and Sepang last year, and used it to really, really good effect. This year just has not had any dry grip whatsoever, real issues with wheel spin, real issues with tyre life as well. Not only has that rear tyre spun up a lot on the throttle, it's worn much more excessively than what they had last year, so that's a key target for Aprilia, just to perhaps revert back to some of the weight distribution settings that they've had in previous years to try and find that more rear grip and what they need to do as well is get a little bit more turning when uh, you're off brake that was another bugbear that Alicia Spargo repeatedly complained about this year I think what you find normally with the Aprilia as well you can see a lot of it with your own eyes Matt uh, the, the, uh, Alicia Spargo just looks like he's constantly wrestling the factory Aprilia it, it rarely looks like it's on rails well, he said, didn't he, a couple of rounds ago, there is nothing more that I can do. I am absolutely on my limit, on the ragged edge, every single lap, just trying to extract every single thousandth of a second out of that bike as he gets in hot at the first corner. There's a laser spy group. Just to see how he gets on with Andre, you know, next year, his previous couple of teammates, Scott Rudding and Sam Lowe's, he's had a really close and good relationship with as a laser Spargo, although I suppose he's always felt that he's had the upper hand, he's always been the uh, the faster rider. If Andre you know, he starts coming in and gives him a few uh, anxious moments, which I'm sure he will do, the maniac. It, it doesn't strike me as, as, a, as a teammate combination where you're going to be seeing them linking arms for, you know, well, and skipping down the paddock. What we do know, they are, and they have a reputation for being a couple of Latino hotheads at times, don't we? They're, it might get a little bit feisty down that Aprilia garage. Certainly if Romano Albaciano and his Diwali engineers don't make some major breakthroughs with the performance of that RSGP. Need to find a bit of speed as well out of that motorcycle. Coming off the corners, it hasn't got the best acceleration. Not helped, of course, by the fact that the rear tyre keeps spinning up. That's not going to help you top the speed if you're sliding coming out of corners. As uh, Maverick Vinales gets another good lap going here, Simon. Yes, guys, so what the Yamaha guys are doing is, meaning uh, Maverick and Rossi, what their teams are doing with them is they've got, uh, like Massimo Mirigali said this morning, they've got a, an 18 bike and the new uh, different configura uh, configuration engine in the other bike on the other side of their garage. And what they're doing is going back and forth between uh, brand new tyres on one bike, you know, brand new tyres on the other bike, and then uh, used tyres on um, each bike to see where the advantages are, you know, like if they can do a faster lap time um, on either bike or 
you know what well basically their problem has been uh, with used tires getting grip it's so they're trying with used tires to see if the new engine's better compared but they're doing back-to-back uh, tests so uh, and then then the tricky guys I almost got caught and said that Rossi is out on the new engined uh, bike now and then I double looked and the markings on the bike they've swapped the bikes from either side you know meaning uh, left side of the garage to the right side so I almost got caught but so Rossi right now is on the 18 engined bike and he's obviously been out previously on the 19 so that's what both sides of the garage are concentrating on today thanks for that Simon yeah it's a bit tricky isn't it Matt because they've not got like a black bike that we can no. sort of spot so it's very difficult and from the, the naked eye you can't see what's underneath the fairing so we can't tell what one they're using Vinales comes into pit lane after what was a pretty successful uh, session there yeah he was lapping consistently wasn't he in those low 131s just saw during the lunch break actually while we were grabbing out a quick bite to eat in the uh, hours absence an army of Yamaha engineers heading out onto the circuit all Japanese engineers as well flown in specially just for this test they are on a fact-finding mission they're all armed